w- William and Harry. Yeah. So when you were were working, did you did you did you get to meet them yep. very often? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what were they like as, as as boys? And do you think that could you ever see this 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 split this this dispute that they have ever ever happening? Never in a month of Sundays would I have I would I have said that they were going to fall out. Um, Harry, when he was much younger, about five or six, whenever he was with his mother, he used to give the waiting photographers the fingers. You know, he used right. to stick two fingers up, and he was always chastised by Diana because he's a cheek, he was a cheeky chappy. As the boys got older, uh, and I've seen them together, I've seen them on the ski slopes. They got on very, very well, and this is why I think that one of the things that Harry said in his book Spare, you know, about his father was so, so wrong. I mean, I watched the prince, the then prince, with his children, and he was as loving uh, to those boys as was Diana. Diana was much more extrovert. Um, You know, once in Canada, you know, the boys were on the Royal York Britannia. They'd just arrived. Uh, Diana and Charles had just finished a job. Diana walks up the gangplank. Charles is very polite. He stands there and says hello to the captain, the first officer, the cook, you know, the first mate, whatever. Diana ignores them all and goes, um, walks, runs practically down the gangplank with her arms wide open and the boys rush up to her and give her a... That's the picture that made, you know, the newspapers all over the world. And poor old Charles is left looking like a lemon, as he was in India when he didn't take her to the Taj Mahal and left her sitting alone there uh, while he was addressing a, a business meeting 500 miles away. He just didn't get those sort of things right. Uh, but the boys themselves were always very pleasant. I mean, I was there the day that uh, William passed his driving test, so it was great, great fun. Um, and so we, we got to see them on special occasions and they were always reasonably friendly. They'd all say hello. I mean, I remember in Canada when they both went to Can- well, the, when they were in Canada, uh, it was like the Beatles had arrived. This was just shortly after Diana died, wasn't it? it was no, like... this, was be- this was before. This was way before. Oh, right, this yeah. was way before Diana died. Uh, was it before Diana? I can't. I'm sorry. Well, whenever it was, the boys. It must have been after Diana died. The boys went up, and they were walking up to a, a, an event, and the screams. It was like the Beatles. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just yeah. pop stars stuff. You know, and I was behind them, and Harry. Harry, Harry kept saying to William, raise your hand again, raise your hand again and see what happens. And every time, William's like an automaton <laughs> waving his hand. And of course, all these girls were just trying to rush forward. It was a fantastic thing. And they were really, really close. And this is what makes it it's so sad that they're now so far apart. I mean, if William, well, it's not if, but when William becomes king, I always believed that Harry would be one of his top advisors. I think that's out of the window now. Yeah. Right out of the window. It should be his wingman. It that, should that be. Was his, that, yeah, 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 that's his yeah. thing. And that's what Diana always wanted. The boys to remain as close as possible. They had each other and it was them against the rest of the world. But of course now, you know, it's not going to happen. Very sad. But one thing I was going to say is that I... Um, so I attended the Queen's, the late Queen's funeral. And I remember being there and I'm um, thinking about journalists like you that had worked on The Sun for so many years that kind of didn't get the opportunity no. to put a byline on or to, to attend the funeral and report on it. However, one of my regrets was that I never, re- because of COVID and because of her ill health, I never really got many jobs with the late Queen Elizabeth II. But you would have done. You, yeah. you, you would have, uh, in, when you were reporting for The Sun and for the other, other newspapers and, and commentating, you would have spoke to the Queen many times, have you? Or... I did, and it was always fantastic chats. But I, I, my first meeting with the, the Queen went terribly. Um, it was in Germany many, many years ago, the late 80s, uh, where we were in a financial crisis. The pound was worth nothing against the then Deutsche Mark. And we'd gone on this tour and there's a, there was this huge reception, as there always is for a royal tour. Um, and I was with uh, a, another royal reporter from another newspaper. And it, this was my very, very first meeting with a member of the royal family. And uh, this bloke was telling me, like, we stand in little groups of six or seven. The Queen comes round. There will be a Foreign Office official there. He's, he or she uh, is are just there just to move the Queen on. 
if the conversation gets a bit fruity or, you know, sh you know, yeah. a bit off. I said, okay, okay. And remember, you know, the Queen will approach you. She will hold out her hand first. You shake it. She speaks first. You know, the usual thing. She's, she's got many icebreakers like, you know, uh, do you come here often? Uh, have you travelled far? Oh, aren't the flowers lovely? It's this sort of opening gambits that the, the monarch usually does. So I said to this bloke, I said, oh, that's fine. Okay, that's really kind. So I'm a bit nervous. So they come into the room. It's a huge ballroom type. It's not just a small room. So there's all these people, all these little groups around. And this, uh, the monarch comes up. And it, this bloke, is he's first. And uh, so the queen holds out her hand. And as he's holding her hand, he suddenly says to her, do you know, ma'am, you cannot buy the good old, you, you cannot change the good old British pound in this country because of the financial crisis. What do you think of that? With that, the Foreign Office aide put his arm in the back of the Queen and moved her on. And I'm just standing there like a lemon as they moved on to the next group. And I looked at him and I said, I thought you said, yes, he says, but I thought I'd try and get a reaction. It didn't work, did it? I said, no, it didn't. You've just robbed me of my meeting with the Queen. <laughs> Um, but other times have been much more um, have been much more fun. I mean, South Africa, uh, when she was having the official welcome in South Africa, uh, there was a, a sort of twenty-one gun salute, and uh, she was standing with Tambo and Becky, and we were on a sort of a, a concrete dais just opposite, quite a bit opposite. What we didn't understand or we didn't know at that time was that the guns for the twenty-one gun salute were underneath this dais. So when they went off. We had the smoke come up, covered us all in smoke. We couldn't see anything. Photographers certainly couldn't take any pictures. There was nothing. Uh, so that was ruined. And later on that day, we went to a reception with the Queen and she came into the room and started chatting away. She said, how did you enjoy the, um, the, the reception that, that I got? And we said, well, yeah. she says, well, you said, I knew what was going to happen. She said, because I saw uh, the rehearsal the day before from my room here and I saw all the smoke come up and she said I've often wondered what the best way would be to get rid of you all and I've just found the exact way of doing it just cover you in smoke and puff you disappear <laughs> she was laughing all the way I mean she's great fun Re really 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 good fun the last time I met the Queen was in 2014 and uh, she was the patron of the journalist charity uh, and uh, I was asked to go there with a whole load of other journalists as well. And one of the journalists that was there was a guy called Harry Arnold, a very famous journalist, used to do your job, used to do the job that we both did. And we knew then he was dying of cancer. And I took it upon myself to speak to one of the aides of the, of the Queen and said, look, you know, this is probably going to be Harry's last outing at all about anything. Is it possible the Queen could stop in the receipt? Yes, yeah, she comes round. She said, what are you going to do? And all of a sudden, the Queen came down. She stopped in front of us. Hands come out, shook her hands and everything else. And then she said, <clears throat> it's remarkable that the journalist charity is now 150 years old. And I just said, off the cuff, I said, yeah, it's almost as old as Harry here. You know, so we all started to laugh and she... She, she looked at me and she said in her best Dick Emery voice, he was a comedian of many, many moons ago, oh, you are awful. <laughs> um, but uh, it, it was a really nice thing for her to do. She didn't have to do it. It was nice for her to do it. And there's one little postscript, and that was a few months later, Harry is in a hospice and the nurses are coming around and they're doing one of those dementia checks, you know, do you know who the prime minister is? You know, what date is it? Um, do you know who the monarch is? And Harry says, yes, Queen Elizabeth II. I was with her a few days, uh, a few weeks ago, and we had a great chat. And of course, the nurses, are, you know, I think he's starting to go now, you know. Um, and it was only when Mary, his wife, brought in the photograph of Harry and myself with the Queen uh, that they, they realised that he actually did beat the Queen. <laughs>